The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Earth Speaking Podcast coming to you on April 24th, 2022. On this gorgeous, beautiful Sunday afternoon here in South Florida, I am blessed to be alive, blessed to, to talk about it. How are you guys doing? How are you jabronis doing? How are all, all you folks doing here on this podcast? I mean, first off, I want to thank you all for, this, for downloading and streaming and all that good stuff and whatnot. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge here because right now I'm doing this podcast right now with my son, right now five-year-old son, next to me. Um, say hi. Me. What is your name? Logan. Logan what? Christian. Very good. Very good. Logan Christian. He knows his last name. That's awesome. He's starting kindergarten recently. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you something. So I want to play with my toy downstairs right now. And you know, I broke my teeth. You broke your teeth? Yeah, you lost his tooth last week. Yes. Lost his tooth seven days ago today. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, anything else you want to say? What the what? What the what? What the what? Um, you're you're graduating very soon, by the way, from uh, pre-K. When we're talking, I could play Pillow Fro. What, what's your brother, right? Go play Pillow Fro now. What's your brother? You guys are even up here. Well, go play toys downstairs with him. He's downstairs and watching TV. What is he watching? WWE. That's, that's, that's the only thing he watches these days, isn't he? Uh, probably. Yeah, and whose fault is that? Is it Daddy's fault? That's no one's fault. Oh, very good. I like that. No blame for me for once. Today we're going to take a party. Oh yeah, we're going to a party later on today. Okay, so let me get, let Daddy. Okay, so this, let's do this here. Let let Daddy finish up his podcast real quick. And then we'll go to the party after, okay? Okay. Okay, go downstairs. Say bye. So, Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> okay, go downstairs. <laughs> go downstairs to meet your brother. All right, let's talk. We're going to do a little bye. talk in here. Say bye. Bye-bye. Okay, see you downstairs a little bit, okay? Okay. We're going to go to the party after we finish the podcast. Uh, we're going to do a lot of talk about here in this, on the show. I'm going to try, I'm, I'm gonna try to excuse in the 20 minutes because, honestly, I don't, don't want to go too long because, you know, the kids have said they, they'll let me record this real quick, and I'm, I'm grateful for that as it is. Um, this podcast, of course, subscribe to all podcast catchers. Um, by the way, thanks, well, guys. Thank you guys once again for uh, listening to the podcast this week. We had a pretty active week this week on the podcast. Obviously, the in the paint this week, we're going to go weekly with that for, throughout the playoffs. Uh, obviously, take three always, always weekly on, on Fridays. We dropped that as well too. That, that, that also did the two other podcasts this week as well too. Uh, my conversation with e, e Duke Bennett on Tuesday was very popular, very uh, insightful. Great dude. Can't wait to have him back on the show again. Um, today we're going solo though. Today we're going solo. And I want to take some folks a task. I want to take, take one team a task. I want to take some players a task. And I think we're going to, we're going to even do a bigger deep dive once this team gets swept. Because I think, I think they're getting swept on Monday. The Brooklyn Nets are now 0-3 against the Celtics. It's pathetic. This team's pathetic. Because this team was supposed to be in the finals this year. And yes, even with all the stuff of Kyrie missing half the year because of the, the, the mandates and all that, everybody came in the playoffs saying, oh, this is dangerous and this team's going to be feared and... Everybody was everybody on top of the of the Eastern Conference front was trying to position themselves to not play the Nets, I guess. At least that was that was a thought. These guys are pathetic. They're pathetic. I'm sorry. They're soft. The Brooklyn Nets are soft. Can we just say that? The difference in this series right now between the Celtics and the, and the Nets is one thing. It's not that the Boston's more talented than they are. Because I argue they're two top two the two best I argue the two best players in the series right now. I, I would argue at least the best player in the series right now is Kevin Durant. You can argue that Jason Tatum and Kyrie Irving might be a wash. Well, I probably put Tatum at this point ahead of Kyrie because he's dependable number one, and he's in, and we had the debate on in the paint back on Tuesday that Tatum might be a top ten guy, you know, at this point. But certainly Kyrie and and Kevin Durant, you know, two to three best players in the whole in the entire series, are in Brooklyn, and, and and they don't got scrubs on that team, you know, they got some veterans there and some guys to play, South Korea can play. But this team, this team is an entitled team. This is why they're all down all three. This is why Boston beat them. Boston, Boston's not much better than Brooklyn. Do you know why Boston's? Do you know why Boston's down oath up oh three oh against Brooklyn right now? Because the Nets are soft. Because Boston wants it more. Boston doesn't fear Brooklyn. 
They're playing up in Durant's face. They play up in Kyrie's face. They rebound the ball. They're crashing the boards. They do all the things necessary to win the series. The Brooklyn Nets are sitting there entitled, entitled to win this series. Or oh, they feel entitled to win this series. No big deal. You remember Kyrie and, and Kevin Durant two years ago on the podcast saying, oh, we don't need a coach. No big deal. We don't need Steve Nash. Really? And by the way, speaking of Steve Nash, why the hell it took so long to, to play Blake Griffin? Who actually gave you a little spark in the fourth quarter yesterday. Like, I'm not, I'm not advocating for Steve Nash to get fired. By no means. But I'll tell you what, right now, it's a bad look. It's a really bad look right now. And right now, the Nets, they're, they're the softest, they're softer than Charmin. These guys are pathetic. It's, it's, it's bad to watch. Again, it's not, like, it's not that Boston is more talented than Brooklyn. It's that Boston just wants it more. And honestly, you know, I don't have a horse in this race. I'm not a Nets fan. I mean, people say, oh, you're from Brooklyn. But yeah, the Nets were in New Jersey, okay? Stop. I've been a Heat fan for 32 years. I have no allegiance to the Nets whatsoever. Let's stop that noise real quick, okay? You, y'all know I hate the Celtics. But I, I damn well respect the Celtics, too. I always, always have, always will. These boys want it more than the Nets do. It's just that simple. They want it more than the Nets do. These, these Nets players feel entitled. There's Kyrie and the mandates and not missing game, not getting vaccinated. And again, I, I defend this right to do the hell he wants. But they are in this, in this position right now because of what he did, too, especially. And of course, we, we, I mean, we don't have to get, we don't have to get into Ben Simmons now, too. The, 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 the softest of all, Ben Simmons. Mr. I got mental health issues. I'm sorry. I think, I think that dude is, is actually weaponizing that. Straight up. He's weaponizing the, the mental health issues. Okay? Ben Simmons is soft. Okay, he, so he fits Brooklyn Nets. To be honest, he he fits that culture. You know, and, you know, there was talk as well. Okay, well, game four might come back. Does it matter now? Does it matter at this point? But if Simmons comes back, I expect I, I expect to release in the next couple hours that Ben Simmons will not play game four. You know, and, and this thing also too. If you're down 2 okay, what what's two days going to change at this point between Saturday and Monday for Ben Simmons? If you cared about your basketball team. That you claim to do apparently, I guess I don't know. Who knows what his head is at these days? You know, if you care to care about basketball or care about your team that you play on, wouldn't you try to push for game three? You know, I don't think two days is going to improve a situation for his back. I'm sorry, I don't think 48 hours is a big deal. If you're not old two, if you can't play game three, then you can't play game four. In my opinion, so, sorry. Okay, especially if you miss a whole damn year of basketball. You haven't played basketball since last May. Like, what, what are we doing here? Like, seriously. So he fits that. He fits that culture. He's, they're soft. The Brooklyn Nets are soft. And they deserve to lose this series. I hope they get swept. I hope they get swept tomorrow. Seriously. The reason why I even want the Nets to win some games now is, is to have more basketball games to watch. Selfishly as a, as a fan. But the Nets don't, don't, don't deserve to, to win a single game of this entire series. The, the Celtics won it more. And for all the folks who sat there and... and, and Something in the Celtics and, 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 and how they've been playing? Dude, th- th- this team's went on fire since January. They're for real. Jason Tatum might be a top, top, top 10 player now. Jalen Brown's feeling himself. And now they got Rob Williams back down in the lineup. So again, the Nets are soft. You know, and they deserve to lose the series. They should get swept. Hope they get swept tomorrow. Hope they get swept tomorrow. Get out of here, man. Get out of here with the soft stuff. Get out of here with the, with the drama, the Kyrie drama. And we'll get into Kevin Durant later on. Because Kevin Durant has been, uh, been a massive disappointment in the series, especially too. Okay? Kevin Durant's been a massive disappointment. Okay, all this talk about Kevin Durant being the best player in basketball, he's not. I already told you that he's not the best player in basketball. It's Giannis. Okay, Kevin Durant, you, you can't do what you did here. I'm not saying I'm blaming Kevin Durant for everything that happened here in the series. I'm not saying it's his fault they, where they are, but he hasn't shown up at all. At all, in any of these three games. Now, a lot of credit goes to the, the Boston defense, of course, but Kevin Durant, just, he, he, he's, he's checked out. He's just checked out. This team is soft, mentally, physically, the whole nine. And, he'll, and and Ben Simmons and that team deserves each other. End discussion. So, anyway, rest of the playoffs uh, right now. I, so, I'm recording this at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Bulls, Bucks, this went off uh, about half an hour ago. Um, So, we'll see how that series go. Bucks bounce back big. Take a 2-1 lead now without Chris Middleton. Great win on Friday. Dallas and Utah. Utah's lucky as hell to be in this series too, too, because they got Luca back. Dallas got Luca back game four and almost lost that game too. But I mean, Utah's pathetic, pathetic anyway. They're gonna lose the series anyway. I think we'll see how, how that goes. Uh, Wells in the West. Um, Golden State and Denver should, should probably gonna wrap up today. Three zero. Golden State lead. I, I, I think the Warriors win the West. I think the Warriors gonna win the West at least. Maybe the title. Okay. And I'll open up the discussion about Steph Curry versus Kevin Durant. Who's who's more valuable? At this point, I think it's Steph Curry. Okay. Um, what else thing else do? Memphis and Minnesota tied two. What a game. 
the, these last couple of games have been fantastic. Game three, game four, Minnesota bounce back. Um, obviously, Heat Hawks two one game four is tonight. As a recording, Miami pissed me off on Friday night. Jimmy Butler pissed me off on Friday night. I was so pissed off that I w- almost woke up my kids during the game. Um, Philly, Toronto, State of Elimination wins game four. So you're now three one now Philly Toronto. Um, and I think that's it, right? Got Bulls, got Bucks, Sixers and Raptors, Heat. Celtics. Yeah, so we're good. We're good there. We're good there. Yeah, but like I said, Brooklyn's are soft, and they, 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 you know, like I said, Ben Simmons and and you know, and that and that folks, they all deserve each other. So that's it. that's it. What it is? Uh, let's see what else here. I got on the docket here. NBA legend Jerry West. Uh, take an HBO task now. I've you guys know the new TV show on HBO, Winning Time. Um, chronicalizing the uh, chronicli- chronicalizing. I guess that's the right word, right? The LA Lakers, the Showtime Lakers from the from the eighties. Um, I watched the pilot so far. Oh, I love the pilot. <clears throat> I decided to wait for this episode to go on before I watched the rest of the show. But obviously, I saw the pilot, and the pilot was enough to 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 really see where the direction of the show was going. And the depiction to Jerry West and Magic Johnson and other play, uh, people, Jerry Buss, of course, and whatnot. Uh, Jerry West is not happy with the way he's been depicted in the series. I don't blame him necessarily. I, 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 my opinion, though, personally, he's probably making a bigger deal of it than it needs to be. I think him complaining about it publicly is bringing more attention to the series, honestly. That's all he's really doing. He wants. I think he sued HBO this week as a result or wants a retraction or something like that. But if you look, if you know the writing and you know Adam McKay as a writer, um, obviously what he's doing with this show is what he's doing is that maybe th- they may not be lying on this situation. But what they're probably doing in the show, and I've, I said this after the, watching the pilot, was that they're probably embellishing what the portrayals of these guys these guys are. You know, and, and, and for the record, for me anyway, I don't look at Jerry West any less. If Jerry West is an angry guy, okay, so what? We're all angry to some degree. We all have anger issues. Some, some of us do anyway, more worse than others. I don't think it's a big deal. Personally, this is my opinion. I don't think it's a big deal. But again, it's Jerry West. He's he's mad about it, and that's okay. He's, he's, he's allowed to feel the way he feels, you know. But I think him complaining about it and asking for attraction, this and that. I don't know if he has a case for honestly for uh, you know in, you know towards HBO, you know. And, and believe me, I've had HBO in the past. What way they've done things in the past, but I don't know if this situation actually is something that I would necessarily put my, you know, my hard earned you know energy into. I know, I know Mary Johnson's not really happy with the way things have been. He's been portrayed as well, too. But again, you know, I think they're just stretching the, it's the comedy. So they're stretching a little bit of the truth. There's probably truth there, most likely. But the, the, the way they're angling the, 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 the portrayals of the characters is more so, you know, just stretching it a little bit for, for comedic purposes. And again, you bring attention to it, bring attention to the show, is going to bring more eyeballs now. Because I'm sure more people now are more interested in the show now than they were before because of the way Jerry West and Mary Johnson was portrayed and the way, what they've been saying publicly. So that's my opinion, though. You know, whatever. But he can be mad about it. And it's fine. You know. But anyway, it's it's, it's a no big deal. Uh, what else on the lock here today? Oh well, dude. How about this? Four days from now, the NFL draft starts. I I had no idea. I forgot the draft is was around the corner. Now, obviously, it's, it's easy to remember because some in some degrees because like the draft almost always falls on the week of my birthday. Um, I'm turning that's why as is recording. I'm I'm returning 30, 42 next week Sunday on this podcast. So make sure you give me gifts. Make sure, make, make, make sure you uh, go to my Amazon, go to my whatever, and you know, t- tap in the gift the 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 gift uh, tab and trying to give me some gift. I'm, I'm just joking, guys. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> um, but the drafts on Thursday, man. You know, and I, not, 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 I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm not a big draft guy. I never really have been a huge draft guy over the last couple of years because my team stinks. The Giants. I've had to be a little more focused on draft. We'll see what positions are going to fill in. But I never would really been a big draft guy. I was I, I was gonna, you know, I'm not gonna do. I was thinking about doing maybe doing a draft special before the show, before the the first round on on this week on on one of my podcasts. But I'm not gonna do that. I might maybe I'll do a, a, a maybe I'll do a a, a post draft special after. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big draft guy, honestly. Um, it is what it is. Um, we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be locked in. I'll probably get some get some wings tonight, and you know, I'll lock. I'll I'll stick around for, for the Gi- the first couple of dra- picks in the draft, and then with the Giants draft and all that. And by 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 the, by, t- by the time I get to the end of the first round, I'm I'm, I'm checked out already anyway. So you know, plus the NBA, NBA playoffs are on too. So I'm not I'm not going to turn up the NBA playoffs for the NFL draft. I'm sorry. I mean, I love the NFL. You guys know I love the NFL, but NBA NBA playoff basketball for me is is, is part number one. Too bad. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, but I'm looking forward to the draft a little bit, you know, I'm going to like I said, check in when I need to check in, you know, maybe I'll have a podcast this week with some friend or somebody, um, on uh, maybe, maybe touching on things, but I'm not going to go into, into like the, 
inside baseball of at all. You know, that's what it is. So, but that's just that. Um, uh, you, you know, um, I've been kind of uh, on Twitter lately. You know, you know, if you watch me on Twitter, you know, how I'm, I'm, I'm obviously active on there, and you know, from time to time, I get into this, you know spats with people on there and folks that just sometimes irk me. You know, Clay Travis is one of the people that kind of irks me at times. Like I, so I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, this might piss off some folks. I used to, res- I used to like Clay Travis. I used to actually respect him a lot. And in some moments, I do sometimes too because sometimes he'll say something that's like, "Oh, that makes sense." But then, like most of the time, he'll say, he'll say crap that makes no crap makes no sense, and then uh, you know, you, you piss me off. It's like kind of like the whole one foot one foot one foot foot one foot forward, three steps back. You know that kind of thing. That's that's Clay Travis nutshell. And then the whole outkick the co- outkick the coverage outkick dot com crew. You know that, that pisses me off, like, especially especially like that 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 clown Bobby Burak. You know. You know, and I think what bothers me about Outkick is this, because because I was a fan from the beginning, and they were weren't what they are now. They they are now a right wing publication. They say they're not, but that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> they are a right wing publication now. You know, they 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 know where their bread is buttered. You know, and Bobby Burak's probably worse than Clay Travis. Bobby Burak is, is, is this guy's this kid. He's, he's like a kid. He's like he's fucking ten years old. First off, um. This guy is obsessed with Bobby Jones. Likes to talk about Bobby Jones' ratings and HBO. His, his shows is is not doing very well, you know. But you know, it's pathetic though because like it's like if you don't like someone and you don't care about the left leaning thing and this and that, why are you investing time into that in the first place? Like all you do is sit there and bitch and complain about the left and this and that and and about what Bomani's doing and this and doing and ESPN's ratings and you know and you know. What bothers me is, is that a lot of this shit is just, it's so disingenuous. It really is, because you sit there and you sit, and you say, and I, and I and I did the podcast on this two years ago, a little ten minute snippet on this. You know, this whole idea that oh, Outkick is fair and balance, Clay Travis is fair and balance, Bobby Burak and those clowns are fair and balance. No, they're not. Okay, and I would have more respect for you, Outkick. I would have more respect for you, Clay Travis. I would have more respect for you, Bobby Burak, if you just admitted to who you are. That I, you are a right leaning publication, and that's, and, and that's not a problem. You're allowed to have that. No one's saying it's a bad thing to do that. Whether I agree with, you, with your politics or not, it doesn't matter. But don't bullshit people in saying that we're fair and balanced. You never have criticism for the right ever. And yes, I can say that because I actually do at times read your publications. I do at times listen to the podcast because that's my job as someone who works in media. That I'm gonna, I'm not gonna have this opinion unless I'm actually. You know, investigating what exactly I'm talking about, and f- based on my own investigation and, and seeing your st- your stuff and reading your your work and listening to your podcast all the time, you have no criticisms for the right at all, at all. Just admit that who you are. Just admit you know where your bread is buttered. You are a right wing publication. Again, it's not a bad thing. It's okay, but just admit who you are. Be honest about that. It, 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 it's it's upsetting sometimes because it's it, it's annoying, you know, that you say one thing and you do the other. Like I said, they're, they're clowns, you know. So, again, they know what the bread's buttered, and that's and like I said that's okay. You you have an audience, but just be honest about that. I'd rather be honest about that. Don't bullshit people. That's all. You know, you're obsessed about Bonnie b- 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 Jones and. Obsessed with the left and what the left is doing, this and this and that. You have zero criticism for the right, okay? You have zero, okay? If you're fair and balanced, you will have you will have criticism for the left and the right, okay? I'm not saying there's things that you can't criticize the left for. Of course, there is a lot of things. I mean, hell, I do this podcast all the time. But this is this is difference between people like me and people like you, okay? I am authentic in what I say. I am very critical of the left. You, you, you hear, and I have the this, the 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 years one years of podcasts I've done to do that. People will tell you that. I have people on this podcast who who said that I've been heavy handed on the left sometimes. Okay? So stop. Quit the bullshit. You are this is who you are. You are a right wing publication. Own that. That's who you are. And move forward. At least you can admit that. Well you, you, you apparently you can't. But that's what you are. Okay? Just be generous about it. Same with you, Clay. Same with Clay Travis. Same thing. You you know where your bread is buttered. And that's okay. But don't bullshit people saying that you're you're fair and balanced. You're not. You're not a centrist. You're not a centrist. Okay? Because if you're a centrist, you have more Christians for the right too as well. And you don't. Anyway. 
So we're just talking before I get out of here. Um, and this is more so personal. So I've been known on many platforms on my wrestling podcast, Take Three Wrestling Podcast, as being a what you call a AEW mark. AEW mark being a, a fanboy, bias, that kind of thing. And to some degree, it made sense maybe maybe a year ago, two years ago, when the first when the company first started. It, it would it would be apropos to say that, and I probably would agree with you. But I have been saying on this podcast the last four months now, maybe four months into the into the year, you know, I won't. I have not watched any Raw, any SmackDown, or any Dynamites. Maybe one episode of Dynamite this year. Whereas for the first three years, two years, or whatever of the, of the of the company, I watched much every single Dynamite they aired on Wednesday. And I think now, I don't know if it's pro wrestling interest as a whole because I still watch wrestling. Or is this AEW interest? But I think my AEW interest is finally starting to starting to wane. Because I yeah, I know what's going on to some degree. I still follow, you know, people tell me, of course, you know, I, you know, when you do a podcast, you gotta know some degree what's going on, at least the main feuds. But to be honest with you, I I, I feel like I've lost interest. I I, I don't know if it's because of Tony Khan and some of the dumb crap he does and he says all the time that's it's kinda Kind of worn on me a little bit. It could be part of that too. Could be my schedule. Could it be lifestyle. I mean, I've said to also too in the past that it's harder. Like, unlike football, basketball, baseball, golf, you name it, there is no such thing as an off season in wrestling at all. Okay, you know, wrestling is every single week, no matter what. You saw through the pandemic, even through a freaking pandemic, even through a freaking pandemic, wrestling never ended. So if I take two, three, four weeks, whatever, or a few odd months from watching the, the regular TV stuff, you know, I'll do that. Now, as I said before in the past, WWE does a better job of, of product placement. What I say by that is they do a good job. If you're not going to watch Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, they do a good job of putting enough clips on the YouTube page, on Instagram, on Facebook, on um, Twitter, of letting you know this is what happened, this is what's going on, da da da. They put enough clips to keep you in the loop. A lot of that too is because of the fact that they don't need USA the same way USA Network the same way that AEW needs TNT. Because I mean, for all the talk about ratings and stuff, and yes, the ratings have gone lower. Raw is still the number one rated show on USA every week, so they need WWE. TNT, however, doesn't need AEW right now. AEW is still the new kid in the block. So, so AEW wants you to watch every week. They they need you. They need the eyeballs because they need a reason to to stay on TV to extend contracts. Come on, we know this already. So they need you. They need us to watch. Okay, but I think also too also as well. AEW. I think one of the things I bother with AEW these days too, especially is that one of the things I I, and I think I've come to a place where I actually. This is who I am. I love wrestling as a whole, like the art itself. But I also love sports entertainment. I also love being entertained. Like that, 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 that whole wedding segment last week on Raw with Dana Brooke and, and Reggie and all those guys. To me, that's fun. You, they, 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 all, the whole AEW marks would say, oh, that's, that's silly crap. No, that's fun for me. That's going to draw more eyeballs. People who, like, who don't watch wrestling, they're, gonna, they're probably going to want to watch because of stuff, stuff like that. Because you can't just rely on just in-ring. Again, there's an alternative for that. AEW is a good alternative for that. You know, you, you go watch New Japan and Impact. I like the mixture of both. And WWE, for all for all the words they have, they still provide both. They still provide both. So I, I, I got to keep it real. I got to keep it real with you. I still think, you know, I, I, my AEW interest has, has, has definitely waned. There is some dis- disinterest. Like, I could watch Dynamite from last week now, but I'm not, but I'm not motivated to. And I'm, I'm not saying AEW's product is bad. They're not, they're not bad. They have really good wrestlers in there I enjoy. I love Adam Cole. I love CM Punk. You know, I love Daniel, Daniel Bryanson. Da, Brian Danielson. But, wow, that's in a backwards, isn't it? Shit. <laughs> um, I, you know, I obviously love, love MJF and Warlow's a star. And, so there's things they'll like. But I think what's happening now is that I don't have enough time in my day to, to, to invest two or three hours anymore just like that. And now you have the NBA playoffs started now. Sorry, I mean, playoffs comes first. I'm I'm locked in. 
every night. I go to, I go to work during the day. I come home, put my kids to bed, and by the time my kids are in bed, first game, second game, third game, it's all started. I'm locked in the playoffs. I, I'm not, I'm not deviating from that. Sorry, <laughs> that's my Super Bowl. So yeah, the AEW disinterest is true. It's it's real, and and and, and I don't know. They, they, I would like for them to do more sports entertainment stuff. I know they said that originally that they were going to be a real, a real wrestling company, and that's fine, and dandy. But ultimately, if you want to reach a higher ceiling, AEW, Tony Khan, are you, if you're listening, because I know you're listening to this. You want to reach a higher ceiling, you need to invest more in the sports entertainment aspect of it. Because you have a ceiling and a floor. WWE's ceiling and floor is much larger than yours for a reason. The reason why WWE's branding is much bigger. Of course, they had that 30, 37 year head start. We know that. But also, they also know that they have a wider audience and they'll have ways to attract the people. Pro wrestling is not enough to expand your ceiling. Hit to break it to you. So, uh, one more thing before I go. Um, I was going to say this in another podcast, but I thought I'll just touch on it now. And this was inspired by a discussion we had on Take 3 um, this past uh, Thursday, Friday, whatever. Before court Thursday, uh, Friday. And re- referred to John Cena and the Mount Rushmore conversation about who's in the Mount Rushmore all the time. Because it, it started from a conversation about Roman Reigns and whether or not he, he, he warrants discussion in the Mount Rushmore. Not whether or not he's there, but if he's not there, is he at least worthy of a conversation about it? And then John Cena came up in the conversation. And Mike, you know, Mike could be, uh, shot the bike, of course, said, you know, Cena is there. And Cena's not only, not only is there, he's snug there, in like one and two, with Austin. And I've been, as, as you guys know, I've been away for 17 years from the product, from 02 to 19. That's pretty much John Cena's entire crux of his run. I literally stopped watching wrestling in 2002, right after WrestleMania 18. John Cena debuted on WWE television in June of 20, uh, 2002. So, therefore, I didn't get to experience John Cena in the same way. Now, obviously, I knew who he was. Obviously, I saw, I saw matches here and there, sporadically here and there. But I was not watching the product on, on a day-to-day basis. Okay? And I always said that Cena was in the, was in the conversation, but I never pushed Cena into the, into the Mount Washington simply because of the fact that I wasn't watching it. So I can't necessarily comment on things I wasn't watching or experiencing at the time. But in the, in the last three years, I've been watching, you know, since coming back. You know, now, Cena has not really been involved much. He's done, you know, he's done the summer, obviously the, the last year's SummerSlam with, with Roman Reigns and he, that whole one, two month build up. And then, of course, he did the, uh, the, 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 uh, the cinematic match with uh, Bray Wyatt in 2020 during the pandemic. But I've been watching Cena's stuff. Watching documentaries and see, watching Cena stuff, this kind of filling the gaps between the last last seventeen years I missed. There's not a, there's no question he's, he's Mount Rushmore all time, and you can argue he's probably deserving to be even higher on that because the, the longevity factor. Think about this: O two he debuts, he's the guy by O five, and then he's the guy for a good a good ten year run. He also put a lot of guys over on top of that too, and even today in 2022, he is still relevant. Like, there's no question in, in terms of the WWE relevancy, he's bigger than The Rock. Let's, 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 let's just go there. Is The Rock a bigger, bigger movie star? Yes. Is The Rock a more entertaining star? Yes. But when you look at tippy top guys that were tippy top guys for a long period of time, the C- John Cena had that. John Cena was the guy for a good 10 years. That's Hogan ish. That's what, what Hogan was in his first run from 84 to 93. That's Hogan. And Hogan's definitely my Mount Rushmore, without question. People say, well, Austin, you know, she should be there, despite the fact that his career was sh- shorter in WWE. Yeah, that's a good argument to have against Austin, but the problem is, is that Austin was also the biggest money draw in the history of the company, still to this day. Still to this day. Okay? The biggest run, and, and let's, be, let's be real here, when you're a guy that literally saves Vince McMahon from going broke and Bankrupt, whatever you call it, you know, and it, and it was put on Austin's shoulders. You get credit for that. Austin's and Austin still to this day gets the biggest pop in a company, as you saw by WrestleMania a couple weeks ago. So if I do about my Rushmore, it's definitely Hogan, it's definitely Rock, uh, definitely Hogan, definitely Austin, definitely Cena. Four spots kind of weird. I know some a couple of my followers said said uh, some some of them said Undertaker, some said uh, Andre Giant, 
I, I think they're in a conversation, but I think those guys weren't tippy top guys. Those, those guys were foundational guys, but they weren't tippy top guys. They weren't guys you put the company on their shoulders, but they're guys that you relied on. You know, they were foundational guys. It's, 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 a, it's a little different in, in wrestling in comparison to sports. You know what I'm saying? So the fourth guy, I might still put The Rock there because as the era was so big that The Rock was still needed to be that guy. So I might still put The Rock there as a Mount Rushmore WWE guy. Honestly. The only guy I would probably consider besides that, you know, I mean, people say Bruno Sarantino, but that's that's pre-Vince. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if I'll go that far. But in terms of, you know, does John Cena deserve to be there? Absolutely. John Cena, we're not 20 years in John Cena's career here in WWE. You know, we talk about Randy Orton right now being the, you know, 20 years appreciation. And we'll, we'll talk about that in the next, in the next episode of this other show or take three. We'll see what happens there. But John Cena was the guy. John Cena wasn't just, wasn't just one of the guys. He was the guy. Okay? And he's been very influential in the last 20 years, too. The spinning belt and, you know, just the whole... And he stayed he stayed true to himself the entire time. He was controversial in some ways within the WWE universe. You know, being a good guy, getting booed at times. But they, they, stayed, they stayed the course of that. And now look at him now. He's his, historic. So John Cena is definitely a Mount Rushmore WWE without question. Without question. So... On that note, that would do it here. I, wow, I went longer than I thought. 30 minutes, 30, 30 plus minutes in this podcast. So again, I'm on Twitter at EJChristian7, Ernst Speaker Podcast, Ernst Speaker Media, of course, on YouTube. Ernst Speaker Media, um, and, and, you know, again, on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, EJChristian7 on, on Twitter as well, too, to talk to me. Um, beyond that, I got a birthday coming next week, I said. Check out the, uh, you know, my Amazon. And I'm, Again, I'm joking. Just joking. Anyway, I'm done here. So we'll talk soon. Um, and till the next one, we'll talk later. Later.